In this video, we're going to cover the different ways you can access your AWS cloud services. As we explore these different cloud tools and uh, uh, different clients, uh, we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons therein with each of them and go through a little bit of the setup uh, with regards to the local CLI SDK. I'll be introducing the AWS Genomics CLI, but we are going to be working with that more in detail later in this course. So let's head over to our repo. To understand the client tools is to understand the pros and cons of each of them in turn. Some of them you'll install locally on your machine, others that you can access right within a, um, an internet browser window. The cloud console is the Amazon AWS uh, web user interface. And we have shown this in other videos in this course already. Now, there's nothing to install when we access our services through the web UI. Uh, with this in mind, it does offer some ease of use, as well as uh, it comes with a uh, browser-based CLI environment. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how to access that. In the top right, there is a small terminal icon that you're going to want to click on to open up that Cloud Shell uh, instance. Now, before we get there, let's just take a look at what exactly is Cloud Shell. Okay? Uh, Cloud Shell is going to be a temporary EC2 virtual machine, machine instance that's going to be spun up for you within that browser window. Uh, it comes pre-installed with your uh, command line interface, uh, libraries, and um, editors. With this, it does also come with one gigabyte of persistent storage per region. Okay? And when you open up your Cloud Shell instance, it does pre-authorize you to take advantage of that web user interface and be authenticated in to create your and augment your resources using the CLI. So here I've spun up my uh, Cloud Shell. So I've spun, I've hit on the little terminal icon. It's spun up my, uh, my Cloud Shell instance. You'll see that it's just reminding me that it's come pre-installed with uh, specific tools. The storage is included and uh, I have a home directory of those same files. So I'll hit close. And now you can see that we are in our terminal uh, window within our Cloud Shell instance. Let's just say I wanted to see what kind of buckets I had for this current account. Notice it's telling me I need to start my prompt with the AWS. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start that. So we're gonna do AWS, and then we'll just quickly do an S3 LS. And this is going to list out uh, my buckets here. So with this in mind, uh, you have some functionality built right into your browser. Notice I didn't have to download any keys. I didn't have to install anything locally on my machine. Uh, this happens to be a secure environment where my credentials are passed from my login from the web UI over to this uh, um, Cloud Shell instance. So this can be very beneficial when working with uh, workflows um, in AWS. From here, you can install the local CLI SDK to your local machine. Um, and so from here, you can click here to uh, get that information, decide uh, on which machine you're going to install that, whether it's Windows, Mac, you pick, and then follow the installation instructions from there. I happen to have an um, instance of VS Code up and running. So just to show you a little bit about what's going to happen here, is you will have to um, assemble a credentials and a config file. And so you can see here I've got two, three different profile users uh, to be able to um, configure in and to log in as for my AWS account. With that, I have to uh, also provide the access keys um, along with those uh, configuration details. In order to use these configuration details, I need to then go to the terminal section of my local editor and uh, put the AWS configure command in to access my AWS resources in the cloud. So let's do that now. Now, if I don't include a profile flag like such, it's just going to reference my default account. So at this time, I'm going to be credentialing into this account. If I use a profile flag, then I can actually go in and access other different user accounts as well. So I'll go ahead and hit configure and then uh, just confirm the settings. Okay. At this point, let's go ahead and 
make sure that we have connected to our resources. The easiest way to do this is just to list your buckets out from that current account. So I'm just going to go uh, S3 LS. Don't forget your uh, AWS prefix. And I have successfully credentialed in. And so with this, uh, I know that I have credentialed in from my local um, code editor and now I am all set to go. As we've established, there are many ways and client tools to work with uh, your AWS services. Okay, um, We worked with uh, the console, we've looked at Cloud Shell, and now we've actually investigated how to connect and configure into your local editor using the local CLI SDK. Upcoming in the course, we're going to be working with the Genomics CLI. So if I click here, uh, this gives a little bit more detail onto um, <clears throat> the CLI. With that, we'll be spending time um, working with this genomic CLI uh, on our machines to run some workloads. There are detailed instructions on how to set this up, and we'll get to that further later down the course. Not only are we going to be using the genomic CLI, but we are also going to be using uh, AWS SageMaker. And so you can expect a little bit more details to come on that uh, with regards to machine learning and some of those workloads um, further into our course as well. So uh, some talking points regarding which client to use and when, right? Obviously, when we're working with the console, we are click, click, clicking on the web UI. Uh, this is great when we're in a learning phase for AWS services. Uh, as we start to work with the command uh, line, command um, interface, we want to make sure that um, we understand it thoroughly. So uh, the integrated console or cloud shell is great to experiment with those small analysis jobs, okay? When we're working with large analysis jobs, then we're gonna be wanting to work with uh, scripts and source control. And so that is where your local uh, CLI SDK can come in and be really pow powerful for you.